I thought it was odd that Mia kept referring to Woody as satanic. It's a strange insult. Hail Satan! Hail if I'm pissed off at somebody, say for cutting me off on the street, I might say the guy's a a-hole or a jerk, but I don't say that guy's satanic. We just don't use that term that way. And to be clear, Woody is not a Satanist. He's Jewish. But then it made sense. We forget it now, but during the 80s and 90s, the Western world was possessed by the satanic moral panic. There was a rash of false child sex abuse allegations. People believed that child abuse was rampant, literally around every corner. People really thought that their children were exploited in occult sex rituals by Satanists. There was a mass hysteria around what people feared was an epidemic of insidious Satanists living and working in our communities who operated in plain sight posing as teachers, police officers, and daycare workers, yet they were secretly having sex with children and running underground pedophile rings. These allegations didn't just happen once or twice. They popped up numerous times all over the world. What these cases had in common was three things. They included Satanists, they were false allegations, and the more specific and more ridiculous the allegations, the more momentum the allegations took on. Entire communities were outraged and vilified innocent people based on these allegations. In what may become one of the biggest child molesting cases ever on record, seven nursery school teachers were arraigned today on more than 100 counts of child molestation. A case which has shocked much of Southern California and caused a lot of parents to worry about the safety of their children. Setting off a panic around the country. In alarming numbers, preschoolers have been exploited. Could it be your child? The media blitz demonstrated unstinting belief that this had happened. It was sensational and lurid and seemed to always be expanding. 1,400 children in this community have been ritualistically abused. It started out here in Manhattan Beach looking like an isolated incident. One mother noticed that her young son was having nightmares and difficulty sitting down. Teachers at this prominent Southern California preschool were accused of sexually molesting their young students. Authorities now believe that at least 60 young children were victimized and that the ultimate number could well be much greater. Fueled by unskeptical press reports, the charges mounted on the evening news. Those children, some of them as young as two years old, were photographed by the suspects. Kitty porn was the primary purpose for the alleged sexual abuse of children. Becoming more and more bizarre. Some children alleged that a living creature was sacrificed on the church's altar. The truth about Satanism is they truly do use blood and they mix it with urine and then they also use the real meat, the real flesh. This is what makes Satanism true. And this is what 1,200 molested kids in the city of Manhattan Beach have told the Sheriff's Department. How ridiculous were these accusations? In the McMartin case alone, the children said they saw witches fly. They traveled in a hot air balloon. They were taken through tunnels. They said Chuck Norris was one of their abusers. In the bizarre detail and sheer volume of victims, these accusations were beyond ridiculous. They were ludicrous. What have I done? As ludicrous as the McMartin case was, it lasted seven years and cost $15 million. Up to that time, it was the longest and most expensive criminal case in U.S. history. Another common feature of these cases was that the children were recorded on videotape and the interviewer coached them with leading questions. Sound familiar? The interviews are upsetting to read because essentially what happened is the therapist unintentionally coerced the children into fabricating stories of abuse. And the children initially say, no, the therapist, though, didn't accept those answers. So then they repeat the question. And then they repeat it again. Eventually, the children realize that their interview is never going to be allowed to end until they start giving the interviewer the kind of answer that she wants to hear. Recall that Monica Thompson heard Mia Farrow recording that tape of Dylan over two to three days, asking her the same questions over and over again. In 1992, all of the world was focused on a small Canadian town, Martinsville, Saskatchewan. This article came out just one month before Mia created these allegations against Woody. 
There's no doubt that Mia was well-versed in the hysteria, having been the star in the most iconic movie ever made about secret Satanists operating in plain sight. We know Mia referred to Woody as satanic and evil, the same words used to describe the child sex abuser in these cases. We know that she spent two or three days recording Dylan, the same method used to accuse these innocent men. The formula was simple. All you had to do was call someone a Satanist, say they abused a child, and like some demonic curse, watch their lives get completely destroyed. This is Officer John Popovich. He is now exonerated from the Martinsville scandal and was found not guilty, but he never recovered. This is the moment he was traumatized for life. It was when he learned he was falsely accused. And the full horror hits him. I got sore, not hurry, I got a... You okay? Oh, I'm not, my... Nothing. I got a fall game. Six, thirty, scary! I'm gonna lose my two kids! It nearly destroyed his relationship with his daughters. Fortunately, he was able to save that, but the psychological damage was permanent. I will never be able to lead a normal life like you can or anybody else. Come and go as they please. I still got to watch where I go. I still got to watch what I do. And there are still a lot of people out there who point fingers and say I'm guilty. In Oak Hill, Texas in 1991, the Kellers were also falsely accused. But unlike Officer Popovich, they spent 21 years in prison before they were released. It started the same way. A child was recorded on videotape making false allegations. According to these allegations, the Kellers made everyone take off their clothes and had a parrot that pecked them in the pee pee. The Kellers flew them to Mexico to be assaulted by soldiers, but still managed to bring them home in time to be picked up after work. The child was given Kool-Aid mixed with blood. Tigers licked the children at the daycare center, and then the tigers were killed. The Kellers came to this child's house and cut the girl's dog's vagina with a chainsaw. Another child from the center was present, so the Kellers cut her vagina with a chainsaw as well. The Kellers killed bunnies. Not just regular bunnies, Easter bunnies. Is it a wonder that Judge Wilk and Frank Mako were so frustrated at Woody? They saw these easy convictions all over America, convictions that were baseless, but they couldn't get Woody. Though the Kellers were exonerated, they continued to be socially shamed in the community, and that means their safety will always be at risk. In another case, one man, Carl Sortland, was acquitted in 1992. Though he was exonerated by the court, he would face vigilante justice. He was murdered by an angry acquaintance at his home. This is YouTube commentary on the same video you just saw about the Kellers. Despite how ludicrous the allegations against them were, Every single person who commented still believes the Kellers are guilty. They say the Kellers' exoneration makes them sick. The satanic moral panic is still going strong to this day. Those falsely accused will never socially recover, and their lives will always be in danger. What do Satanists actually believe? According to the Satanic Temple, they believe in compassion, justice, reason, and the failability of humankind, not child sex abuse. Ironically, it was never Satanists abusing children. It's been the Roman Catholic priests all along. The fact is, the world would be a better place if we had more Satanists and less Roman Catholics. There's another cost to these false allegations. The cost to the children was also permanent, even though the abuse was completely made up. Much like Dylan, many of the children involved in the satanic moral panic continued to believe they were sexually assaulted despite overwhelming evidence to the contrary. And false memories continue to traumatize them to this day. Fake can be just as damaging as real. What about in your son's mind? Has he, has he changed his thinking in any way about what happened? Not at all. He is still just as angry and upset to this day. This wasn't just a one day thing or a one month thing. I mean, we suffered for many years over this. And has it gone away today? No. And I, no matter how hard you try to block it out and forget about it, it, it never goes away. I was already traumatized. 
here's the thing. I mean, outside of a court of law, we do know what happened in the attic on that day. I just told you. It's clear that Dylan truly believes she was sexually assaulted. Yet experts involved in both the Martinsville and McMartin scandal tell us that children retain the trauma of their false abuses. When someone has no memory of an event because it didn't occur, then it is much easier to suggest to them that something happened, even if it didn't, and for them to accept that suggestion. And the weaker the memory and the longer the passage of the time, the more easily one can accept as fact something that may never have happened. And that is what very likely happened in this case. It was obvious in the interviews that all kinds of techniques were highly suggestible, highly pressuring, and is capable of creating false memories of abuse in children, often permanent memories. From Moses and Sunyi's testimony, we know that Mia was an expert in gaslighting her children. Now imagine if you were told since you were seven and for decades afterwards that you were sexually assaulted. You would believe it too.